Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And this is my review of Nightmare Detective from 2006 and Nightmare Detective 2 from 2008. Two Japanese horror films that were directed by Shinya Tsukamoto. In Nightmare Detective, a female detective investigates a mysterious pair of suicides in the stylish tale of terror. When it's revealed that both victims died after dialing zero on their mobile phones, the detective discovers a suspect who harbors the power to enter people's dreams. Can, he, uh, can this woman stop him before she becomes a victim of her own nightmares? Well, she requests the help of a dream traveler, played by Ryohei Matsuda, to stop this madman, who is played by Shinya Tsukamoto himself. Now, like most of this director's other films, Nightmare Detective feels different from a typical film, right from the start. It just feels like a Tsukamoto film to me. Very stylishly shot, which is a natural continuation with uh, his recent films like Gemini, A Snake of June, and Vital coming into this one. All these films are visually interesting, and that continues here. Tsukamoto has a real knack for capturing urban locations especially, and that is showcased in Nightmare Detective. I really like the framing of the camera shots, the lighting, and the locations in this film. You see a long wig of hair at the very beginning, and this is how this sets this up. Okay, Ryohei Matsuga goes into this guy's room. You see this long wig of hair in the corner of the room. You're like, oh no, are we going to have an Onryo ghost in this film? But the film immediately subverts your expectation for a Sadako clone by having Matsuda immediately appear and assess the situation from within the dream. And the opening sequence is fairly quirky, actually, especially when Matsuda comes out of the dream and interacts with his own dysfunctional family. And you can tell early on that this guy has issues, but he's coerced into helping the police with this case. So there is a theme of suicide in this film, a theme that we've seen in many Japanese films. Most of the victims were contemplating suicide before they are killed, but in some cases, the victims had no idea that they subconsciously wanted to kill themselves. So it's almost as if this villain is peering into their soul and granting desires that are kind of buried in their mind. Definitely a little bit of social commentary as well regarding the Japanese way of life. I mean, very early on, we see a young woman basically call the villain with an interest in ending her life. And this is something that actually happens in Japan in real life. You know, people find strangers on the internet for the purpose of organizing group suicides. And that bizarre act is referenced multiple times in this film. Nightmare Detective also touches upon some themes that were explored by this director in some of his prior films. At one point, you know, a bad guy says, you know, in this concrete jungle, you've lost your will to live. And this idea is seen in movies like Tetsuo, Tokyo Fist, A Snake of June, etc. So we have some good subtle content here that ties into this director's other films. Now, Tsukamoto's high energy level is evident in this, basically the monstrous, demonic manifestation of the madman villain in these people's dreams. Like the monster design... Reminds me of something you'd see in like a body horror film. The difference here is that you you only get very quick glimpses of it. You know, the, 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 ca the camera work uh, moves quite a bit in these dream sequences during the attacks. So you never really get a lengthy, unedited shot of the monster itself. Uh, I would usually have a problem with this shaky cam technique. But I think it worked in this film because it shows just enough to be freaking terrifying. Like, you see a, a brief glimpse and your imagination kind of fills in the rest. It also shifts to the monster's perspective as it quickly attacks its victims, which is a benefit because <clears throat> you can tell that this thing is moving very fast without the need for dodgy CGI. And I, I would much rather have this practical uh, filmmaking technique to express the monster's abilities and, and looks over dodgy CGI. Because dodgy CGI would have killed this film. So thank goodness they didn't use it. The death scenes are pretty effective in this. You know, even though the monster moves quickly, the, the deaths themselves are pretty bloody, uh, and they frequently involve very sharp knife gouges into the body parts, 
which looks very painful. So Nightmare Detective mostly avoids genre cliches with its scares, and I appreciate that. The film is nicely paced, consistently engaging. I like the story, and it gets weirder as it moves along. Hitomi is the lead actress, and she does a sufficient job here. She's not great or anything, but she's more than adequate. Maybe a little bit stiff, but it's consistent with the character they, uh, they're they kind of communicating with her. Ando Masunobu, the crazy guy from Battle Royal, shows up in this, as well as Ren Osugi. So there are definitely a few recognizable faces in this, which is pretty cool. The first Nightmare Detective film, you know, I actually strongly recommend it. Online, it gets kind of mixed reviews, mostly positive, but a little mixed, which is a little surprising to me because every time I watch this movie, it just holds up. It's just really entertaining stuff. Now, what about the sequel? Well, this is one of those scenarios where I think the sequel is better than the original. So Nightmare Detective 2 from 2008, still haunted by his unwanted abilities, which allows him to enter other people's dreams as well as memories of his mother dying when he was a child. The Nightmare Detective slowly drowns in his world of misery, and that's an accurate description of this guy. A young girl, having heard rumors about his extraordinary abilities, visits its home and begs for his help. She tells him that she is suffering from nightmares that are getting scarier, and some of her friends are starting to die from them. The murderous entity in her dreams has already killed two of her friends, and she's afraid that she's the next to die. So in this film, Tsukamoto exhibits a phenomenal patience that completely eliminates any type of cheap scares whatsoever. And the first film really didn't have cheap scares, but this one, it, it's more deliberate. And he opts in this case to build tension with long-lasting suspense sequences. And there are some very expertly crafted white knuckle stalking scenes in this movie that are very memorable. Like the first film had like a humanoid monster basically attacking these people. In this one, it's just a it's a young girl, but they're structured in a way that's that's really effective. There's nothing cheap here, and you feel a discomfort during these scenes that's earned and very well executed. And when I think about it, the scenes in this film are really driven by the viewer's imagination of what might happen, regardless of whether or not it actually happens. And there's a very strong feeling of anxiety in this movie that's developed because of that. I mean, the, the scenes in this film really aren't that violent at all. But there's it, it, they have a certain uniqueness about them that's very hard to describe. You'll know what I'm talking about if you've seen Tsukamoto's films, right? The script is jam-packed with ambiguity as well. And it may leave some viewers a little bit frustrated at times. It greatly accentuates the serrated structure of dreams. You know, there were moments in the first film they were dreamy, but Nightmare Detective 2 takes that aspect up a notch, I think. And the dreamy feel is accentuated with a very atmospheric score, creates kind of a hypnotic mood to this one, which is always welcome in my book. And consequently, this sequel is less conventional, I believe, than its pre predecessor, it has stronger psychological overtones and better character development of our lead, our lead protagonist, who gets a pretty interesting backstory. It's blended in with the uh, current day horror events. And Raihei Matsuda, I think, gives a pretty convincing performance in this. So overall, I think Nightmare Detective 2, again, one of those sequels that I think is even better than the original, and I like the original quite a bit. So both films, I think, make a very nice double feature. These kind of slip through the cracks, I think, in Tsukamoto's filmography. Well, really, all of Tsukamoto's filmography slips through the cracks, uh, outside of maybe Tetsuo the Iron Man, which most people have seen, or a lot of people have seen. But again, these are films that uh, are definitely worth watching. They're available digitally on various websites. If you want to add these to your physical media collection, the first film can be easily found on DVD, especially the U.S. DVD. But you may need to search a little bit for the DVD of the sequel. I think I have like the all-region Malaysian release or something, which you may be able to find on eBay at times. So look out for these. At the very least, watch them online because they're I think they're worth watching. They're pretty cool. And as always, I will see you next time.